Hey guys, you might be noticing that you are getting extra content from Horror Movie Night today. Uh, usually we release our episodes late Friday night, early Saturday morning, but you might be sitting at your phone uh, Monday night, Tuesday morning going, how the fuck is there a new episode? Uh, there, <laughs> there isn't. Uh, it is July 5th. It is exactly one year that we've been podcasting. One year ago today we released the Wolf Cop episode. Uh, so we sat down and uh, just rocked through... A bunch of episodes, the first 40 episodes, finding what we thought were some of the best moments uh, for for you guys as a walk down memory lane. And also, if you've been wanting to try to explain the show to your friends, uh, this is really a great way to introduce them to a lot of the inside jokes that, that just pop up through every single episode. That was kind of the key thing that I looked for, was, was the references that still uh, are brought up all the time. So... You know, without a huge spoiler alert, you're going to hear a little bit of Duke. You're going to hear a little bit of Puppet Master talk. You're going to, you know, you're going to hear a little bit of uh, Johnny Depp. A lot, a lot of Johnny Depp. Uh, but, but maybe you won't be sure it's Johnny Depp. You might think it's Michael Showalter. You never know what's going to happen. It's there's a lot of stuff that can happen throughout. Uh, this this best of episode. So this is our thank you to you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this walk down memory lane. Um, it was a lot of fun cutting this together and there's a lot of cool things inter intermixed in here you're going to hear a lot of ads for a lot of people who've been super supportive of horror movie night over this year so definitely take some time to check out their podcasts as well because they're all really really cool people uh one that i want to draw a little bit of extra attention to is an ad in here for horrible imaginings podcast do yourself a favor if you want the complete bipolar opposite of what horror movie night is Go hit up Horror Movie, uh, a Horrible Imaginings podcast. It's done by a guy named Miguel Rodriguez, who all three of us know from the original beginning of what started Horror Movie Night, which was the, the Reddit Horror Club. Before Adam, before Scott, the show was hosted by me and Miguel. And Miguel's just a super cool dude who has a lot of passion for cinema and horror and is just a really cool dude. And he's been supporting us since day one. Even after uh, Adam and Scott kind of took over his duties as a host, he's always been checking in on me and, and making sure that the show's going well. And I'm going to be on a future episode of Har Horrible Imaginings in a couple weeks when I go out to L.A. So make sure that you guys are checking out his stuff because he is a really cool dude. But enough of that. Enjoy this best of episode that we have for you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys and ladies. <laughs> the, the few that we have. <laughs> not disagree with you guys more on every <laughs> single point that you're making right now. Well, this is why we have you on the show. Because, yeah, you because otherwise it would be a 10 minute episode. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, just say I mean, a few nice things and be done. I, like, you you said that you respect this movie? <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> this coming from the guy, I mean, let's let's just go down your previous picks. Even before <laughs> we started doing Harvey Me Night, you picked Taxidermia, uh, Great movie. I love Hungary. Not the song, uh, right? Hungarian film. The, 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 the thing, the, the cook, the wife. The, yeah, the, yeah, you picked that. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, English people love it. Satirism, that's great. That's a good movie. Keep calling. Adam, you turn more and more into canon every week. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, is that sometimes I forget canon is not Canadian. He's a Canadian. <laughs> he's, he's a kind of Canadian. <laughs> yeah, but no, seriously though, this movie is there. There's a reason it has a cult following, and it has everything to do with the fact that you're a goddamn idiot, Adam. <laughs> no, it has everything to do with the fact that the last twenty minutes of this movie, absolutely out of control, shows you the character. It shows you Pumpkinhead, and it does not shy away from that. I mean, you get to see Pumpkinhead full on in his glory, doing what he does. And that's understandable, and it's good because that's—I mean—that's a good character piece. Like, 
that's a, that's a good practical effect. But the first 50 fucking minutes of this movie does not make it worthwhile <laughs> to watch this piece of fucking shit. Like, this is awful. This is so unbearable for the first 50 minutes of it. There's You're the not- biggest baby. <laughs> oh, go, go well, I, I wasted. I wasted my time. I felt like uh, like Adam. I all you have is time. time. <laughs> <laughs> this is your favorite hobby, so don't complain. <laughs> you spent all oh. week at your shit job being like, I can't wait to watch this garbage movie so I can rip it apart for forty five minutes with my two best friends. Yeah, I can't. You're I can't. I cannot, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get to get home. And spend 50 minutes looking at nothing. <laughs> looking at literally nothing going on. I might as well have watched paint dry. It's fucking boring. By the way, this is coming from the guy who loves The Room. The Room at least has sex scenes in it. <laughs> Puppet Master 3, Toulon's Revenge. My favorite puppet is Leech Woman. See, I never liked Leech Woman. I have, a, I have a lot of uh, sort of like problems with the idea of Leech Woman. But yeah, this <laughs> yeah, are they mad? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, this movie really bothers me when you think of the origin story of Leech Woman. Well, it's like he put well, his wait. wife's Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I, I have it in my notes. I want to get to it in my notes so we can discuss it there. Because okay. um, can we, I mean, before we just, I'm not going to jump all over your notes, but I mean, he's fucking shoving leeches into his wife's mouth, essentially, is what happened. I, I think that that's just adding insult to injury. <laughs> he fuck, his wife dies and he's like, this is the best I can do for you. He literally <laughs> says, this is the best I can do for you. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. Whatever, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the note. All right, I'll spoil the note. All okay. Right. Would you want this for your wife to be some horrible, immortal, deformed leech woman puppet? It does not look like she's leeches. enjoying to her like she doesn't look like she's enjoying well, herself. Well in this movie and any other movie, it does not look like she's having fun when she has to vomit up those goddamn leeches. All right. She looks like, like she's just in constant pain <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah, like, why would you do that to your fucking wife? Okay, I, I am the only one of the three of us who is married, so I can weigh in on this. I wouldn't do it! Gotta, okay, so Leech, Leech Woman, Woman is my favorite. And I like Six Shooter quite a bit. I'm gonna go with Pinhead. I like Pinhead. Uh, yeah, he has, He's like, the only the one that I believe that could actually kill people. Well, he looks, even at that size, he, he for whatever reason, he looks intimidating. Toulon is cracking one-liners through this whole movie. He's all like... You can be sure that the general will be, will be well armed. And then he looks at Six Shooter and he's like, But so are you. <laughs> <laughs> like, your wife just died. Your kid, you're on a hunt to get revenge against Nazis. What are you cracking one liners for? <laughs> All right. So then the Nazis start attacking, and, you know, like Pinhead throws a brick right into one of their fucking skulls. Uh, Tunnler digs a hole right into one of their shin bones. That's fucking hardcore. Uh, Leech Woman, dropping leeches on that guy's face. Doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. It's <laughs> hey, he's it's like, her revenge. He just lays there. He's like, ah, ah. And then she's like, plop, right in his mouth. It That's seems, what kills you. It seems like every time that Leech Woman <laughs> wants to drop leeches on somebody, all the other puppets just sort of stand back. <laughs> They're like, okay. Go ahead. It's so awkward thing. because they're standing there and she's just like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> face like, is all like, <laughs> 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 and then, and then, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't kill them. So you have to assume that the other puppets come in and finish the job. So but it's they just do like, it after she's left. So she doesn't feel bad. So she feels yeah. like she contributed. Yeah, no, Leech Woman, you got him good. You keep going to that next room. Pinhead's throwing her the thumbs up as she like walks away, and then he breaks the guy's neck. Like, all right, now we can go. Uh, I just don't feel like uh, here's my main beef with the with <laughs> with Puppet Master in general is I just don't feel like any of them could really kill anybody. <laughs> Maybe Tunnler. Maybe Tunnler. All hell, horror movie night. All hell, you come in my ring, and I'm gonna whip your ass. 
you son of a bitch. Adam O'Brien, you a son of a bitch. I'm going to whip your ass. You trash. You son of a bitch, you step my 20 by 20 string circle. You talk about your uh, horror movie night issue 16. Well, Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. You need to get yourself a bottle of Thunderbird because you can't cut it anymore, son. I'm going to whip your ass because the bottom line is Stone Cold said so. What? Just 15 minutes in this movie, we've met six characters and seen them meet each other, had man-ass and full frontal female nudity, and had multiple should-we-shouldn't-we-go arguments. Wait, like, wait, wait. Where, did I miss the full frontal? Who got naked? Stacy, man. Stacy. She's like full frontal. Stacy? <laughs> <laughs> there was... Dude, Dude, this is one perfect movie. example of how much I could not, how how little a shit I fucking gave about anybody in this film. Yeah, that's like in the wow. first ten minutes. I watched this like two weeks ago, and I don't remember anybody's names. So the, oh, the, oh, I had to look up a picture. She's the one that looks like um, Michelle Williams. Well, she's the what she's actually from is uh, what I know her from is she's in she's the man. Uh, and she's the girl that has that. a crush on Amanda Bynes' character as a boy. Oh, you were man, too got... old to be watching She's the Man when Dude, she's, she's the Man came out. She's now. the no, Man no, no, no. is a great movie. <laughs> no, She's the Man is a fantastic movie because poor Amanda Bynes. It was before Amanda Bynes got real crazy, but it's real cute. I really like that film. Um Who's the dude in it? That's also played by Amanda Bynes. <laughs> so uh, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a terrible joke. Do you, can we all agree that they should have cut the explanation scene? You know, where Jeff is, like, putting the blood on Amy's face and explaining what the plan is. Would it not have been better if he had just come down the steps with Amy's body and, and we found out that she was still yes, alive? Yes, that would have been yeah. much better. But You know, you know why that would have been a better idea? Because it would have made the movie three minutes shorter. <laughs> <laughs> anything. Anything. <laughs> See, here we what go. We, right what if we right just cut, movie again. What if we just cut the whole thing where they go to the, the ruins? <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just make this a delightful... Let's basically watch the first half of Hostel. So. Well, let's just make this a delightful 15-minute movie about a bunch of people who go to Mexico and a German guy asks them to go to ruins and they say, no, thank you, and then they get on a plane <laughs> safely and go home. <laughs> just, they're just politely declined. <laughs> <laughs> but you still got to see Amy naked or else Adam would piss your shit fit. <laughs> yes, please. Stacy, actually. It was Stacy. Trash Video is your one stop video shop in Sleazoid City. Who the fuck is that dickhead? I don't know. We have the best rental stock of horror, cult, B grade movies available on VHS. Movies with corpse rape? Oh, let me get sad. Blu ray? Fuck that shit! VHS! Faces of Death is a family film. Our professional, friendly, and knowledgeable staff are here to help you. Hey, Roxy, after the shift, you want to go watch a porno with me? Shut up, Seth. I'm doing my nails. So stop on by the store today. I smell like all oh, the takes in here. Trashvideopodcast.com All right, um... Oh my god, so, so much exposition in this movie. This movie could be like an hour long if it wasn't for the goddamn exposition. Like, there, there are four serious exposition moments where it's like a good five minutes of flashbacks and or some dude being like, smoking a stogie, like, this was the worst night of my life that we took about it, you know? Like, well, yeah, a like, the character will just stop and be like, you see this bottle of booze? I saw a little boy crawl out of a woman's stomach. <laughs> But that's how you premise every story. Um, this is the point in the movie that I realized that Toulon had claimed that Jester was a doctor in his previous life. <laughs> <laughs> and Jester and Dr. Giggles make the same fucking noise. <laughs> oh, my God. So God. when Dr. Giggles died at the end of this movie, Toulon came along, took the Put it in a puppet and killed Nazis. <laughs> all right, I guess Dr. Google's is all right. He gets to go to heaven now. Yeah, there you go. So you want a sequel? Fucking, it's, you, you got one. It's called Two Lines Revenge. You know what? <laughs> I guess this is the best I can do for you, my dear. <laughs> Come along, my friends. Let's get, let's get away. 
James and Janet have sex in a science classroom before the brain attacks them. This is not important to the plot in any way. It's just kind of weird that it happens. No, no, no. This is straight Stephen King sex scene because if you've read any Stephen King books, it's always like, oh, we're being chased by this supernatural evil. Better fuck. It's just, <laughs> it, it sappens every, it, like, it's Christine, Carrie, fucking, like, I don't know, uh, Kujo, probably. I'm pretty sure Kujo's there. just heard a kid. Kujo involves a, a, a woman and her son driving like, a car. Where is the sex in that? There's somebody having sex. And, <laughs> At the beginning of that, <laughs> at the beginning of that movie, Cujo chased that rabbit into the hole and fucked it, and that's, that's, that's how he gets the. That's demon. what I was forgetting. So, oh um, my I'm god! Up for it. I'm Adam up for it. jumped on that so quickly. <laughs> the problem with the brain, though, is that like it needed another draft or two of a script. Like they need it. They, they needed someone to sit down and read the script and be like, Hey guys, didn't we already write a chase scene? Like, I don't understand why. <laughs> like, and they're like, no man, we didn't, we talked about writing a chase scene and yeah, it yeah, happened like this seven time, times. <laughs> this time the car's not going to start the first time. And the person with the gun's going to get behind the car. And just as he starts it, that person's going to shoot. No, and no, they're almost gonna shoot it. No, Adam, I'm pretty sure we wrote that already. Like, I'm, I, look, I know that Let's I'm the only one. Let's talk about car chase guy. Look, the I know that, chase guy. I know I'm the only one who hasn't done any of the coke yet. I'm pretty sure that all these things that you're saying, we did. Can we please? Can we please just read the script once and then make some changes well, here, to it? Here, take take a fucking line. Have a fucking line, <laughs> guys. I don't know about this. Are you sure? <laughs> You know what? You're fucking right. We need one more fucking car chase in here. Really hype it up, bring in the tension. What do you think? Uh, Whole room probably... full of dukes, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't start, they start off as Canadians. It's when they take that one sweet sniff of cocaine, they just. Yeah, like, <laughs> like... Oh, I, guys, I don't know, eh? Do you really think that we should, bud? I think that's a few too many car chase scenes. <laughs> Yeah, fuck yeah! <laughs> and now we know how Wolf Cop got made. <laughs> Fab, a comedy with bite. So Keith befriends a waitress named, um, <laughs> here comes Matt Kelly, unable to say a name. Amardo? Is that how we're going to pronounce that? Amaretto? Ar- I think Am- oh it. my god! <laughs> Amarto. 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 <laughs> hey when we need, when we take a little break, um, if we could take a, a quick little break, I need to go make myself an Amarto sour. <laughs> Yo, You're grab so me a... fucking stupid. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to give me an Amarto on the rocks, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, what's that stuff that I love? Um, the the um um oh, they make it out of cherries. Oh, Amardo cookies. Oh, that's the one. Hey, um, I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to get a, a, a double YSK on the rocks. Does anybody want anything? Any, um, any Amartos? <laughs> I really love some Southern cum ferrot. Yeah, I, I drink a lot of room and Cokes. <laughs> Amarto. Uh, guys, I don't know about you, but I love uh, Whisk High. <laughs> Whisk high. <laughs> Have you had any of that boat case? It's pretty good. <laughs> I heard this story that you told us one time about you had too much vodka, and then you told people that you were from uh, Ruska? Yeah, Ruska. <laughs> I, I'm from Krakow. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Matt, continue. No. <laughs> Matt, I, don't even remember, I don't even remember how to properly say it now. What, how is it pronounced? <laughs> Emma Just keep Fred. saying um, no, Amarto. Just keep saying <laughs> okay. that. Stick to it. Stick to your guns, buddy. Anyway. Uh, Amarto. <laughs> Amarto. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Amarto insists oh. uh, that they know each other. <laughs> this is the enters 
John Johnny Depp and like holy shit, this movie's bad. <laughs> and Wallace. Uh, Wait, Johnny Depp? Yeah. You well, that's the French. That's the French detective. Oh my holy god! Holy shit! Oh my- Holy shit! Scott didn't know that. <laughs> oh you want to know who I thought it was? I thought it was the guy who wrote Wet Hot American Summer, and I was like, "Why is he in this? It's terrible." Oh, Michael Showalter. Yes. Oh yeah, no, no. my fucking god! That's, Scott, that's Scott. Johnny Depp. <laughs> that's Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp and Kevin Smith's daughters play the two girls working at the convenience store. Like, if I ever have kids and they ask me about weed, I'm gonna be like. <laughs> Take a look at this guy. This is <laughs> this is this is exhibit A of, of the ways that pot will wreck your life. Like well, Adam, like, okay, go I ahead. think we need to talk about Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, guys, we need to talk about Kevin. He did he did so much worse. Then with a bow, <laughs> this is way fucking worse. He subjected way more people to his weird fucking shit. At this point, at this point in the movie, I cannot believe that there is still ninety fucking minutes. To this movie. Yeah, I, I thought that the like the denouement of the stupid toss of of, of the actual like um, transformation was going to be in the last fifteen minutes. No, yeah, it wasn't even about that. It's a real uh, fucking human centipede issue, <laughs> which I still haven't seen, and I refuse. To yeah, see. no, you're not missing anything. But oh my god, is... no, 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 no! Human centipede is way fucking better than this movie. Oh, I'm not saying way that, but, but, but human centipede also suffers the same fate of like introducing the human centipede like 40 minutes in the movie, and then you're like, well, what the fuck else are you gonna do with this movie? <laughs> yeah, but they they actually have like an interesting concept with that, right? Like they. Like, I mean, at least there's, like, a scene in that movie where it's like, haha, guess what? You have to eat his shit. <laughs> like, in this movie, it's just like, that guy just screams. <laughs> Justin Long just screams that he's a fucking walrus for <laughs> for so long. He keeps yelling cuckoo ca and shit. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's finally transformed. Yes. <laughs> God. I am the egg man. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's actually... Okay, I don't actually have to write, I don't have to say the rest of my notes because you just fucking killed it. That was awesome. Oh my God. That was amazing. Hey, you! Do you want to stay up to date with all the most recent happenings in the gaming industry? Do you crave intelligent discussion on all of gaming's numerous topics? Then head over to Geekscape.net and listen to the latest episode of Geekscape Games. Coming to you at a cinematic 30 frames a second. And we don't even work for Ubisoft. So is this why wishing wells have never worked for me? Because I've been putting coins in them the whole time, but I guess the heroin? (laughs) Black car only! Also, she had this big fucking bag of heroin. Who let her hold this heroin, bring it with her, be alone with it, and handle, like, three-gram bag of heroin this whole time that everything was going on? So, uh, holy shit, is that a trail of gristle and blood leading into a tight, confined space full of flies and dead cats? Fucking out of my way, guys. Me first, Geronimo. <laughs> this is a pretty traumatic experience. I think and all our friends are dead. I think me is going right back to the age. <laughs> oh, <this guy. laughs> Just to numb the pain of that self-inflicted hand tear. Yeah, 15 seconds after the credits rolled, she was diving down that well going after that fucking <laughs> powder. Hi, this is Sex Ferguson. I, I really like your show. The, the horror movie night is really good. I uh, I enjoy reading it and listening to it when I'm when I'm on my truck driving around. You know, I go from from city to city having sex with lot lizards and listening to horror movie night. The the wonderful tones of Matthew Kelly's voice keeps me going after you know the the hooker has stolen my money and 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 given me German herpes, which never goes away. So. Anyway, uh, I took a bunch of uh, gas station deck pills, uh, drank four loco, and, well, if I don't get some strange soon, I'm gonna, well, you guys know, 
Anyway, it's Sex Ferguson, saying keep up the good work. Now, if you want me to shit on the scene, let's talk about when he covers that girl's face. <laughs> well, that's where that, that, that's, that's about that's where we're straight, at. <laughs> that is straight House of Wax, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so the mass intruder carries Becky down to the basement where Jerry's tied up and there's another woman strapped to the table. They believe that the killer is Slauson's demented brother. And then, yes, the killer begins to cover the girl on the table's face with plaster, cause her to suffocate so he can make a No, 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 she doesn't brother. suffocate. He's oh. like... Your heart will burst from fright. <laughs> You're not gonna suffocate. Your heart's gonna explode from fright. <laughs> well, actually, you covered all of her face holes, so probably suffocate. That's not going to happen. Well, I think that that was that was fun because that felt very much like a killer, like a Vincent Price moment where he was. You know, a killer, maybe, maybe Mask of the Red Death, not Mask of the Red Death, um, uh, uh, shit, what is it, Lygia, um, what we're, what movie? we're asking, Adam, is basically for you to repeat that line again, but do it in your Vincent Price voice, and you'll see yeah. how great it is. <laughs> yes, you're not, you're, you're not going to suffocate, your heart is going to explode from fright, <laughs> <laughs> See, how much, how much better is that now? <laughs> Nah, better. Is better. My big complaint with that scene is he talks about how much the uh, plaster's burning her, and she yet he's not wearing not gloves. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. He's, his hands should be on fire. Like he's like, it burns, doesn't it? And he just keeps rubbing it on there, but he's not wearing gloves. Suspension. No, really I, I changed my like... mind. This movie sucks. <laughs> 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 So Scott said that, and you could literally hear Brian's heart explode. <laughs> That's not plaster I just put all over his face. Oh. <laughs> that uh, beat was keep perfect. It, oh my we, God. Keep a, we keep a real highbrow on this Also, why is David Carradine in this fucking movie? He's in everything. That's what I told you last week. He was in. He's in Stung. Uh, after I finished Stung on Netflix, Harbinger Down came on as like a you might like. So I, of course, I added it to my watch list. But like David Carradine is in so much stuff. Like I looked at his IMDb, and that dude is older than dirt and works more than anybody. You're you're referring into him in the present tense. Yeah. And I have some bad news for you. <laughs> he died? When? Like five oh years ago. You never no, heard no, 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 no. You didn't know David, about this? Oh, David. Oh, oh shit, my God. Shit, Let shit. me tell him. I can tell myself. David, Carad- David Carradine got confused with. No, Lance. he didn't get anything. He's dead. He didn't get confused. You got confused. I'm sorry, dude. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> I confused him with Lan- Lance Henriksen. Well, yeah, I, I, that's understandable. Because Lance Henriksen <laughs> is also wore, in fucking everything. Yeah, he's in. A, he's been harbinger down and stung, but he looks You're, old as piss now. By the way, wait, are we not? Were, was David Carradine not even in these movies? No, so he was, <laughs> was in West War Two. Oh my god! Oh this is my god! All over this again, Johnny Depp, all over again. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, no, David Carradine was Frankenstein from Death Wish 2000. Yes. Death and he was Kill he was Bill and Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he yeah. died from autoerotic Auto-erotic asphyxiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which can I can I talk on... about let's let's talk about this for a quick second because this I don't want to talk about your fetishes. Has yet. always been super interesting to me is I remember I was in college when it was announced that David Carradine had been found dead. And everyone thought that it was a suicide. And everyone's like, oh, my God, that's horrible. Like, David Carradine, like, I can't imagine he'd been, him being so sad that he would hang himself. And then it was like, well, now we think it's autoerotic fixation. Everyone's just like, okay, well, that makes sense. Can I, can I be honest? Can I be honest? Best way to go. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I died, it was awesome. 
don't know what you're trying to say here, Adam. He's saying that that's his preferred method of going out. If he's going to go out, he's going to be coming when he's going. <laughs> it's that or whorehouse heart attack when I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, found our band name. <laughs> whorehouse heart attack. <laughs> Ticks. It's not nice to mess with Mother Nature. I'm trying to think if it would be awesome or more ridiculous if, like, Seth Green sees this tick, right? And he brings his booted foot up and stomps down and fucking nothing. Like, stepping on a turtle shell, his foot just, like, bounces off of it. If that would be like, oh, shit! Or if it'd just be like, well, that's fucking stupid. That looks dumb as hell. I I want that to happen and then Seth Green to look right in the camera and go, oh, right, we established that. (laughs) 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 Though the the ticks have varying amounts of, like, tensile, like, their, their skin has varying amounts of tensile strength because, like, the one that gets stuck on, um... Seth Green's lip is like a really hard scone, you know? Yeah. But the one that gets stomped by the vet, the same one, just a different part of the scene, is like a jelly donut. So I don't know. I, I guess we're just going to have to let ourselves believe that. Uh, yeah. That, that... It doesn't matter. It fluctuates on uh, depending on how the scene calls for it. But so, Okay, so... where are we? Okay, I, we're I at say the we're dog at the dog. Death. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. So, so panic's dog lets is attacked and killed by something, and you hear a pretty also, horrific noise. Wait, 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 wait. How dumb is it that he's called Panic? How fucking dumb is that? Okay, so uh, uh, they call me Panic because I never do. Okay, if that was the requirement for like uh, for nicknames, like, hey, they call me I shit my pants because I never <laughs> do. Like, uh, it's just stupid. Like, what a dumb way to get a nickname. Fuck. I'd be oh called getting God. laid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Man, no one roasts Matt <laughs> Kelly like Matt Kelly. <laughs> no, no, that's like in, in the, the the four years that we've been doing this, I couldn't have thought of a burn that good. That was <laughs> fucking great. Uh. So, so Odd is definitely having a bunch of ghost sex at the end of this movie, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Another another question about the ghost sex: Aren't ghosts not supposed to be able to touch people? So, like, is he having ghost sex? Like, no, he's he really... just awkwardly jerking off in front of his girlfriend's ghost. <laughs> well, uh, uh, <laughs> sounds a little bit like your sex life, Matt. <laughs> it's like, yeah, baby, baby. <laughs> Let me feed you this ice cream, and instead, I'm actually pouring it all over my pubes. God, <laughs> with all the with all the scenes where Odd flashes back to what was really going on, why couldn't we have had that shit? <laughs> it's just a whole sequence of all this shit. <laughs> that would have been legitimately laughing. <laughs> And stroking it with ice cream <laughs> all over the pubes. Uh, like the ultimate cry right there. <laughs> you're just tearing up because you're like, those sheets, they're never going to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair, they're already probably pretty sticky anyway. So another thing about the ghost sex, if if he is able to touch her, do you think if he's on top, it just looks like he's like floating on a cushion of air? <laughs> Also, one more thing about the ghost sex. Um, <laughs> do you think when you he really finishes, I think there were twelve. <laughs> do you think that when he finishes, it just like shoots across the room? Or just, like... <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm gonna get real gross here for a second. But what do you think? Does you once came in your own me? eye, so you can't really shock us with anything. <laughs> You know, we're going to have to go through all the horror club shit to find that reference. Yeah, it's really attractive episodes, I, but I don't even I, remember what no, that I, was. No, me neither. I think, that, no, you know what it was? You told us off air, and then we just made an off, like an offhand comment about it. So we've never even like told people the story. We just keep referencing this time. It didn't fucking happen. You can't prove anything. Listen, so, so, no sex. Do you think that, like, there's a the subject? I, I, I actually had one more question about the ghost. <laughs> it, was, 
do you think there's any cleanup involved? God damn, you and I are the same person. Oh. <laughs> I just imagine okay. he like gets up and it looks like he got slimed just from his belly button. To the it's like, oh, that was good, Stormy. Thanks so much. <laughs> you know, I can honestly so... say I did not think about any of this. <laughs> so, so this takes place oh, in the same uh, as Jog Guys at the end, Phantasm, and Ghostbusters. All right. It's an experience that's going to be impossible to find any other way any other where this movie just is just such a tongue twister for me i like good horror of uh, whatever form it takes in all post-apocalyptic they're looking for gas and they all have cars but it would be so much simpler to just have bmx bike the reason that we're drawn a lot to fiction is it feels like you can get closer to a truth by making up stories about it there is a section where a dog shoots a guy now at an hour and 20 minutes in, nobody's listening anymore, so we can just say whatever we want, right? You can see the back of his head in one shot, and adult human beings want his autograph. <laughs> the Horrible Imaginings podcast is the official podcast of San Diego's Horrible Imaginings Film Festival. The podcast is where we discuss all kinds of films, all kinds of topics, but usually we explore horror in history, art, literature, film, and beyond. Discussions with filmmakers, authors, artists. Experience the film festival wherever you are in the world. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Find us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at H-I-F-F-S-D. And until next time, stay scared. But Adam, you saw you actually lucked out and there was a live screening of this movie this past week for you to see. Uh, I wouldn't say I lucked out, but yeah, there was. <laughs> um, if there was ever a film I'd want to see in a theater with a crowd, this is probably pretty high up there for me. <laughs> well, here's the thing, it wasn't it wasn't a theater. It was an art art studio, like where they put art installation. Okay. And we just happened to have a screening there and it was uh, maybe 12 people and the uh, the diversity was not very high <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was mainly um, I think I was the only person in the building that wasn't wearing horn rimmed glasses <laughs> that narrows it down <laughs> for anybody a lot of people dare ironically to watch how to and I think me and my friend that went were the only ones who <laughs> were honestly there just to like enjoy and experience how to um okay but i i didn't write normal notes i wrote it like a story <laughs> like i'm gonna i'm gonna like tell you about my night watching how to all right okay. let's let's do this up then all right so i start the night by listening to vh1's 100 greatest songs of the 90s <laughs> <laughs> As En Vogue tells me about their love and how I'm never going to get it, I begin to already regret this decision. I went to one of these college screenings before, and it was populated mostly by people with the, shy, the sides of their heads shaved, ironically. Men, women, and all the in-between. The bus schedule puts me downtown 40 minutes early. I drink a coffee and smoke. My friend Matt agreed to come to this with me. I meet him there at 10 minutes too. One of the reviews I saw on IMDb was literally titled, Don't watch this on drugs or you might die. I'm a good friend. <laughs> I'm a good friend, so I told him to get nice and stoned before I met him. <laughs> <laughs> his, eyes, his, his eyes look like two piss holes in a snowbank, and he tells me about a folk punk record that he's been listening to all day. I am regretting getting coffee and wishing I had got beer. <laughs> The, the installation for this month is cases of dead insects arranged by color to make, like, pictures. So that, that was fucking weird. Uh, Lesbians outnumber us three to one. I'm the only person here not wearing horn rimmed glasses. There you go. <laughs> Matt suggests we get pizza after this. I agree. Okay. So the, the curators get on stage. They are the most socially awkward people I think I've ever seen. <laughs> One of them talks, 
The other one is just standing there looking at his feet. Um, we watch a trailer for The Room, which they're screening next week, which I'm totally going to go to that. That's going to be a, a little better. And then we have a video appreciation by director Ty West that comes on the DVD. Offering no real insight into this movie, Ty finishes it off in his mouth and swallows in under four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the movie begins. From what we have seen and been told, no one is very excited. It sounds fucking punishing. And then... <laughs> And then the movie started, and I tried to take notes for this fucking movie. <laughs> it, I got one, two, three, three notes, and then I just stopped. <laughs> so they, the dudes that were running it had a PA set up for the sound, and the levels that they had were completely fucked, so the music was ten times louder than anything else. And it stayed that way for the whole goddamn movie. So there's just this like blaring, crazy, inappropriate music that didn't work with anything, just pumping in my ear the whole movie. Um, I've got, dear God, the editing, dear God, this music. And then I've got very fast, experimental, strange. And then I just put, I can't do this. I can't do this. I give up. And I put my notebook away. Adam O'Brien, you try it. I'll whip your ass, you son bitch. You step in the twenty by twenty ring. I'll whip your ass, you son bitch. You talk about your horror movie podcast. You talk about episode twenty. Well, I talk about Austin episode twenty three sixteen. Says I'll whip your ass, you son bitch. I'll whip your ass, you son bitch. You step in the ring with me, you piece of trash. I'll throw you out, you trash. Matthew Kelly is God, and I'll whip your ass. So if I told you guys a story with oh, yeah. that, because I because I, I don't have like a what did I watch this week? I I really haven't watched anything. So I, do you guys want to hear a story? Is it yeah. about a lovely lady? <laughs> no, no, it's it's about um, almost killing a homeless guy. <laughs> Are we gonna regret the story going out to the public? No, tell it. <laughs> All right, so this is Tent Guy in Katana, Troy. Um, so I lived, I lived up in northern Ontario for a while, and I moved into a house with a guy. Now, we, like, rented the back of the house, and in the backyard there was, like, a shack, like a literal shack uh, that was rented out by another guy. Um, now, I don't know how much this fucking guy paid for that shack, but I hope it wasn't more than $200 a month because it was a shithole. Like, it was a real shithole. Um, anyway, so I'm living there for a couple of weeks. Everything's going fine. And one day I come home and there's a tent. There's a tent in my backyard. Um, yeah, there's just a, a, a tent set up in my backyard right next to the shed or right next to the shack, right? And it turns out that Shaq guy, his son, had got kicked out of wherever the fuck he was and had decided to live in our backyard in a tent. In a fucking tent, guys. <laughs> so so shanty, he, he created a shanty town in your backyard. Oh, my God. It gets so much worse. Yeah, you're exactly right. It, goes, it gets crazy. All right. So, so like... After a couple of days, like, we went out there and we're like, guy, you, you, you know, you, you know that you can't just keep living in our backyard, right? Like, this is not cool to do. <laughs> we're not okay with it. And he's like, oh, no, 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 guys, I'm looking for work. I will eventually move. Don't you worry about it. Uh, six fucking months later. <laughs> six months later. How do you, this how guy, do you live in this, a tent outside? For six months in well, Canada. He, he, okay, he had a, ex, he had taken an extension cord and run it from the shack to his tent. So he had a TV. He had an Xbox. <laughs> he had, he had in a fan, tent. He had, in a tent. In a tent. And he had expanded his little, like, tent shanty town. Like, he had gone <laughs> to Canadian Tire. He had gone to Canadian Tire, and he had bought a bigger tent. So that he could have a larger space to live in. Oh, this fucking guy. And 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 we lived oh man, whatever. Anyway, so 
one day I came home from work, and Troy, Troy, Troy was a weird guy. Like Troy, Troy was cool, but he was a weird guy. He had a katana that he had taken to a shop, and he had had it illegally sharpened. So they had like run it over. They they had like run it over a, a like a wheel and shit, right? So it was like super sharp. It was like an actual katana, and he had it to this guy's fucking throat. And he was about to decapitate this guy when I got home. And I had to, like, talk him down from doing it. I was like, Troy, you got kids. You don't want to have to kill this guy. Like, please don't. Like, holy shit. Well, so so, so hey. tell me something. Is this – I thought Canadians were nice. Well, most of us are. But this guy, like, tent guy like was, like, a real – I like myself in that group of people. Like – uh, well, I listen. I'm not nice. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm not, I know. Right I off the bat, my jokes are part of Yeah, I'm an asshole. That's 100 percent fact. But I am not tent guy level asshole. Cause tent guy, okay. T- during this six months, tent guy somehow rolled into getting an into, into a relationship as well. And he was like 25, and he started dating like a, a like a 17 year old. And uh, I, I, I guess once her parents found out that she was dating this guy, they kicked her out of the house. So she moved into the fucking tents with him. So she was living in her backyard as well. But but tent guy would get hammered, right? Like he'd start getting hammered at 10 a.m. Right. And and he'd he'd beat the shit out of her. So oh. he'd start like wailing on her and. Yeah, all of our neighbors had called the cops on this guy multiple times, right? Because he's doing a lot of really fucked up shit back there. Uh, But every time the cop... And living in a goddamn tent. But every time the cop showed up, she would recant her story and they would just leave. So it never amounted to anything. All right, so let's, let's, let's fast forward. We've been putting up with this guy for months. Let's fast forward. So one night... I'm in my room, and I and out the window, I hear all this screaming, like I hear screaming and shouting. And it turns out that tent guy had had somebody over to his tent, and a friend of his. And he had eventually gotten in an argument with this guy, and he's standing in our front port, like our front lawn, and he's screaming about how if this guy comes back on the property, he's going to stab him to death. He's like, come back, like, come step on the line. I swear to God, fucking do it. I'll stab you to death, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, so obviously, <laughs> so obviously you can't just stand on the front lawn and do that, that somebody calls the cops, right? So the cops show up, and I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of the cops showing up and not doing anything about it. So fuck it. I went outside and I was like 100% I witnesses. I saw him threaten to kill somebody. Like take him away. Fucking do it. You know what the cops do? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. They get back in their car and they leave. But he's seen me talking to the cops. Oh, so he's no. mad. You're going to yeah, die next. Pissed. Exactly. He's pissed off at me. So he bum rushes the door. Like he goes right for the door. And I slammed it right in his face, and I ended up hitting him in the face with the door. So now he's extra pissed. <laughs> like, he's super <laughs> angry. So, so like, I slammed the door in his face. He's like, yo, just talk to me. Why don't you open the door, you little bitch? Why don't you fucking, like, you little pussy? Why don't you just fucking talk to me? And I'm like, I have nothing to fucking say to you. Stay the fuck away from me. And I locked the, like, I closed the window, too. So he comes around to the other side of the house where there's an open window, and he starts going, my dad's lived in this backyard for fucking years, which also, what a, what a brag, eh? Like, <laughs> what, a, what a brag. He goes, he goes my, da- my dad's lived in this backyard for years. I know how to get into that house. Why don't you just fucking wait until you go to sleep, bitch? Why don't you just wait until you fucking go to sleep? I'll get in there. I'll fucking get in there. And I'm like, and Mike, like, I have a girlfriend upstairs. Like, she's dying her hair. Like, like she's, she's scared of shit. Like, she doesn't, like, so I'm like, no, this is not cool. So I fucking, I call the cops again. This, as many times, like, twice in 15 minutes, the fucking cops come back, right? And this time, I'm like, listen, this guy's threatening to fucking 
This guy's threatening to break into my fucking house and kill me in my sleep. Like, you guys got to get him out of here. And he he stands... Like, this guy's seen Scarface one too many fucking times. I swear to you. He stands in the middle of the driveway, arms down by his side, and he shouts up to the sky. He goes... I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> like, in, 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 front, in full view of police office, officers, he does this. And then the cops go to, like, take him, and he ducks into his tent. Like, he sprints off to his tent. And so so it's like a standoff. It's like a standoff, right? Like, the cops are, the cops are outside of his tent just waiting. They're like... They're like, listen, you have to come out of that tent. Like, we're taking you to the to the station. He's like, he's like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out. They're like, listen, you got to. And he's like, no, no, I'm not coming out. So one of the police officers, un, like, unzips the tent a little bit, and he sticks a can of uh, pepper spray in the bottom of the tent. <laughs> it just fucking pumps pepper spray into this whole fucking tent. Just fills the fucking thing with pepper spray. And so he comes out and he's like, ah! ah! <laughs> so, so they, you know, they put the handcuffs on him and they, they like wash his eyes out and they gotta take, they like take him to the, uh, take him to the police station. Anyways, it's 3.30 in the morning. I have to go to the police station too. They give me a ride over there. Um, I have to give a statement, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, tent guy does not come back the next day. His girlfriend is sleeping in the shitty pepper spray filled fucking tent. I don't know how <laughs> oh she... Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know how she did that for the night. That couldn't have been comfortable. But anyways, the next day, she gets up and she's like, I'm going back to my parents. What am I doing? I'm only 18. I'm a retard. What the fuck have I been doing? with my life blah 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 she she fucks off she fucks off. um so oh uh, this is this is another little fun part of the story um when we originally moved into the house they wanted us to pay heat and hydro right like they wanted us to pay for utilities so i uh, i put it under my name i sent in a letter to utilities U utilities sent us a letter back saying like oh you haven't uh properly filled this out which unit are you? Like, which which part of the house are you? Blah blah blah. And me and Troy just never fucking bothered to fill it out again. Like, we just we just didn't do it. Um, so in the sh the shack, the shack in the backyard, it had heat and hydro, but at some point it got cut off, and he had to start using a generator to 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 power his shit. And I think I think what happened was that. We fucked up, <laughs> and that and that they thought that the shack in the backyard is where we live. We didn't pay our bills, and so they shut off shack guy's power. <laughs> so, anyways, blah 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 blah. Anyways, long story short, tent guy gets arrested. Shack guy actually eventually moves out of the shack, and they literally just bulldoze the shack because. Nobody should be living there. It's just unlivable. Like, that's not okay. Living conditions. Not good. Um, but three or four days later, Troy comes home and he goes, hey, man, uh, you're going to be you're going to want to be careful on your walk to work. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, you remember tent guy? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, tent guys out of jail. And, you know, the, uh, the like, motel that's, like, two houses down from us? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, Tent Guy and his dad are living at that motel now. Oh <laughs> so they, they, like, I got this guy arrested. He spent, like, four days in jail, and then he moved in two doors down from me. So I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. But, I, you know, I, I actually, I never had, like, I, I didn't have an altercation with him again after that. I... I ended up moving back to Peterborough, so yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's tent guy and Katana Troy. That's my story. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was that was the best of episode. Thank you for those of you who know us well enough to stick around after the closing theme to see if there would be something at the end. There isn't always, but most of the time there is. 
Uh, so this is actually going to be a little bit of a, a sales pitch to you guys. Um, as you know, none of us live near each other at all. Uh, Scott's out in Ohio. I'm in Philadelphia. Adam's up in Canada. And we've been really wanting to do conventions. Uh, and we want to try to start doing conventions, if possible, uh, this fall, but definitely at least aiming for next spring and next summer. And we've been kind of throwing and spitballing ideas of what we can do. We're not sure how many of them we'd be able to do panels at, but we'd at least like to get tables and, and hand out uh, some business cards and maybe make some horror movie night shirts that you guys can buy and actually get to meet a bunch of you guys face to face if you live near any of us. So we just want to hear from you guys. We, we've been thinking about maybe doing a Patreon. We've been thinking about maybe doing an Indiegogo, but we don't want to do anything until we hear back from you guys because we want to know, is this something that you'd be interested in? Would you guys want to see horror movie night presence at different conventions? I know some of the ones we've been spitballing were like maybe a booth at Philly Wizard World. Um, maybe going to Kamikaze in Los Angeles, and then a bunch of horror conventions, like there's the Monster Mania in, in Cherry Hill. I know that there's a convention up in Scott's area that's a horror convention. And just kind of trying to get out there and, and get a little bit more of a presence out in the public. So shoot us an email at hmmpodcast at gmail.com. This isn't going to be stuff that we'll be reading on the air, obviously, but let us know. Would you donate to this? Would you want to do this? And if so, would you want it to be a weekly or a monthly fee that you guys pay as if you were paying for the podcast or would you want it to just be like a once a year thing where we put we we figure out how much we would need to do this and throw together the indiegogo and then whatever we raise is what we're actually able to attend um i know we've been spitballing some ideas on on cool prizes i'm willing to sacrifice a lot of dvds for my dvd collection for you guys uh not the good oh, stuff oh man no yeah, you might you might get a you might get a copy of Primal or or Saint Francisville <laughs> Experiment, but you're finally gonna get a girl over to your house and she's like, wait a second, two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine DVDs? I don't fucking think so. <laughs> <laughs> Out the door she goes. And I'll be like, no, goodbye, my love. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> call, call me when you have three thousand. <laughs> uh, I know that that uh, Scott's been talking about. You know, maybe we can give away some of Scott's music to you. You get free access to different stuff because Scott's always creating music. And we want to give back to you guys in that way. Uh, I know we've talked about maybe doing uh, – if you're if we do a Patreon, then, then maybe we'll do something where we start recording like a monthly commentary track that's exclusive to the, the Patreon uh, subscribers where we'll pick like a really random fucking horror movie that maybe might not make the best episode – but, you know, the three of us will hop on Skype and watch the movie at the exact same time and just kind of commentate over it. And you can download that and watch it with the movie and cool little shit like that. Um, and, you know, if you guys are donating enough money, I think we could even consider doing little sideshows uh, once a month. I would love I know one of the things I would love to do if there was enough people interested in it is maybe an episode, uh, a, a monthly additional episode where we like review a Goosebumps episode or review an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode <laughs> and just yeah. work our way through those series. Because I think that that would be, you know, a good like 20 minutes of just weird comedic stuff because those shows do not hold up well. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they sure don't. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little Adam O'Brien story time for you guys too. I'll tell you more tent oh guy God, stories and shit like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you'll get like special personalized stories from Adam and there's a lot of cool stuff that we can do for you guys. Let us know which ones you are interested in, and, and we'll see what we can do. But, again, thank you for all that you've done over this last year, and here's hoping for many, many more years of, of awesome horror movie night content. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. I might actually kill you guys if, if I have to be with you for too many years, though, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 